Hi everyone, this is James Braithwaite of Braithwaite Physiotherapy, helping you to move beautifully. And today, we're going to talk about femoral acetabular impingement syndrome, which, while a mouthful, is surprisingly common. If you've got a, a restriction in movement at the hip, there's not a small chance that this is a contributing factor to your restriction in range. I've seen some research suggesting 20% and more of people who have hip range of motion restrictions have femoral acetabular impingement syndrome as a contributing factor, so really surprisingly common condition. The structural change that we are talking about here is a bony buildup on either the ball of the ball and socket or the socket of the ball and socket uh, that uh, ends up uh, causing abutments of those two components of the hip and in turn um, a restriction in the range of motion. Uh, range of motions that you might see restricted here include things like flexion, so to think about the deep portion of a squat or raising your knee up high like that. Other restricted ranges might include internal rotation and adduction of the hip as well, so think dropping your knee in. So what are you going to do about it? That's the important question. Well, the first thing that you're going to do is some activity modification. And there's a couple of quick and simple things that you can do. One is when you're squatting at the gym, don't go as deep into your squat and keep your knees nice and wide. So instead of going to full depth, you're gonna to go to half depth and you're gonna keep your knees nice and wide, right? As you do your squat, instead of uh, letting your knees drop towards the inside, which we all know is a no-no anyway on a squat. When you're walking, you're gonna take smaller steps, think 75% of what your normal step length would be. So if this is my normal step length, I'm just going to knock that back by just a hair. It still allows me to have a normal walk. It's just helping me to avoid um, uh, larger angles of hip flexion. So shorter steps on your walk. And also, um, if you're the type of person who walks like a model, and I know there's a lot out there who do, which means walking in with your feet in one straight line. So here, here, here. Can you see my feet there? In one straight line like this. You want to try and avoid that. You want to have some space between your feet as you take steps. No walking in line like a model. As fabulous as it might be to look at, it is not the way to walk if you're suffering from femoral acetabular impingement. So just make that consideration. Other, one other quick consideration, no crossing your legs, right? This type of position is a definite no-no and an aggravator in terms of pain uh, for people suffering from femoral acetabular impingement. So, between avoiding crossing your legs, not walking with your feet in a straight line, and perhaps um, reducing the size of your step a little bit, those are some simple, simple things you can do right off the bat to help you reduce uh, pain associated with femoral acetabular impingement. Okay? Now, what else are we going to do? Strength training. Of course we're going to do strength training. This is a Braithwaite physiotherapy video. We always do a couple of exercises. So let's try something. So, I'll go over here, Jane, you go over there. This is a simple little resistance band that you can fit around your knees. You can find this at any fitness store. Uh, you can ask your physiotherapist. There's a good chance they'll have something like this kicking around. So I'm going to show you how you can use this to add a little bit of oomph to a bridging exercise. Like this. Right, grabbing it around my knees. Then I'm going to give my knees a little bit of spread. I'm going to add bridges to my strength training protocol like this because what we do know is that people who suffer from femoral acetabular impingement associated symptoms, they also often present with weak glutes. So strengthening your glutes, strengthening the lateral rotator muscles will help you to manage and mitigate uh, the symptoms of femoral acetabular impingement as well. So that bridging with the band around your knees is one helpful exercise. A second helpful exercise is crab walking. So you can again take your band like this and work on side to side steps, right? You might think something like uh, seven steps in one direction, seven steps back being one set. Do three to five sets of that just like you would any strength training exercise that you do in the gym. On that bridge that we just did, Again, eight to 12 reps, three sets, okay? So there's two great strengthening, strength training exercises that you can do to help you in this situation as well. What else might we consider? Well, first we're gonna get our band off of our legs. A wall off like that. We also know that core control is really important here. 
Um, you want to be able to control the position of your pelvis such that it's in neutral position here. A lot of folks uh, spend a lot, way too much time in life in a forward tilted or anteriorly tilted pelvic position. And that, by default, places your hips into a flexed position, which, when you have femoral acetabular impingement syndrome, is not a happy position. This is not a happy position, right, for folks with uh, femoral acetabular impingement syndrome. So, learning to control the position of your pelvis in neutral position and to strengthen the abdominal muscles that help you stay in that position is useful. And the big three uh, core exercises that I would recommend that you try to help support that are, of course, planking, that looks like this, right? Our old friend, the side plank, like this. If you really want to impress everyone, you can lift a leg, you can lift an arm, or you can just do it plain Jane side plank uh, method as well, okay? And then last but certainly not least is bird dogging, okay? One arm and, and the opposite leg raised. Don't forget to do both sides. So there's three exercises, planking, side planking, bird dogging. Those three together, I've talked about them on this blog before in the past, three great exercises that if done together will uh, give you an opportunity to hit all major components of your core group of muscles, okay? So think those three. Between those, the crab walk and the bridging exercise, and then those activity modifications that we talked about earlier, you will help yourself to manage symptoms associated with femoral acetabular impingement. So if you have questions about this or any other uh, hip-related dysfunction, please don't hesitate to give me a call or uh, shoot me an email. I'm happy to help. My name is James, Braithwaite Physiotherapy, helping you to move beautifully.